friction in daily life. Friction plays a vital role in our daily life. Without friction, we are handicapped. It becomes difficult to walk on a slippery road without friction, just as a horse cannot pull a cart without friction. In the absence of friction, we cannot even hammer a nail in the wall. The force that opposes the motion or tendency of motion between two surfaces in contact is called the force of friction. Friction is produced when two surfaces rub against each other, which also includes objects that move in air or water. Friction slows down moving objects because it acts in the direction opposite to the movement of an object. Friction depends on the two surfaces in contact. A ball rolls farther away on a smooth surface than on a rough surface because of the force of friction being more in case of the rough surface. Thus, the magnitude of the force of friction between the two surfaces depends largely on the nature of the surfaces in contact. Friction can be of different types. The first type of friction is static friction, which occurs between stationary objects. It prevents an object from moving against a surface. For example, consider a book placed on a table where there is no force of friction between the two objects. But if you push the book gently, it moves as static friction develops between the book and the surface of the table which opposes its movement. If you push the book harder, it begins to slide. But friction continues to oppose the movement of the book. Static friction is also known as sliding friction. Let's take a look at the second type of friction, which is rolling friction. Rolling friction is the friction that hinders the motion of an object rolling along a surface. For example, when you kick the ball, it moves on the ground and then it slows down. A force of friction acts on the ball, thus slowing it down. The third type of friction is fluid friction. Fluid friction is the force that resists the movement of a solid object through a liquid or gas. It is also known as drag or air resistance. The force of fluid friction depends on the shape and surface area of the object. To reduce air resistance, aeroplanes, cars and boats are shaped in a particular way. This is called streamlining, which reduces the surface area of an object that comes in contact with air, thereby reducing the friction. The viscosity of the liquid also affects the force of fluid friction. An object in a highly viscous liquid experiences a higher friction than that in a less viscous liquid. Let us see how friction applies to our daily life. When you walk or run, you push the ground backwards with the help of your foot. The tendency of the foot is to move in the backward direction. The force of friction opposes this tendency and acts in the opposite direction, that is, the direction in which you want to move, thereby helping you to move forward. Friction between wheels of a vehicle and the surface of the road allows wheels to roll forward. When friction is reduced, wheels slide instead of rolling and therefore the car skids. Because of friction, we can hold objects between our fingers. For example, a pencil has a tendency to fall because of the force of gravity. Friction acts on the pencil 
against the force of gravity and stops the pencil from falling. Therefore, we can hold the pencil. We use a pencil to write. Pencil writes because of friction. The lead of a pencil is made of graphite. Friction between the lead of a pencil and paper causes small particles of graphite to break off and get deposited on the paper. Friction is also used to polish surfaces. For example, a carpenter uses the sandpaper to polish wood. The large force of friction is produced when sandpaper is rubbed on wood. The developed friction wears down the tiny bumps on the wood. Friction also helps to produce heat. Primitive man lit fires by rubbing stones. Even to ignite a matchstick, we rub it against the rough surface of the matchbox. Wherever friction is of help, we try to increase it to our advantage. For example, a tire has patterns on it. These are called treads. They are provided to increase friction between the road and the tire. This improves the grip of the tire on the road. Also, the soles of the shoes have grooves for the same reason. Pavements and playing areas such as basketball courts are made slightly rough to increase the friction and thereby prevent slipping. The handle of a cricket bat has layers of a coarse string covered by a close-fitting rubber tube. This increases the friction between hands and the handle of the cricket bat which improves the grip. But friction is not useful all the time as it also causes problems. As friction opposes motion, it is a disadvantage in case of machines with moving parts. For example, while cycling, you need to put some effort to overcome the friction between the parts of the bicycle. Similarly, shutters, door hinges and sliding windows have moving parts. It becomes difficult to use them when friction increases because of rusting. Over a period of time, the moving parts of machines, the soles of shoes, etc wear out due to the force of friction that affects these parts on a constant basis. Wherever friction causes problems, we try to reduce it. For example, we try to reduce friction in machines to make them run smoothly by applying oil or grease on their moving parts. These materials are known as lubricants which make the surfaces of moving parts smooth which help in reducing the friction. Another good example of using lubricants to reduce friction is a frying pan being coated with Teflon so that the cooked food does not stick on it. When a wheel rotates about a fixed shaft there is a lot of friction between the two. Smooth metal balls called ball bearings are used to reduce friction in such rotating parts. These balls are usually arranged between two metal rings which rotate with very little friction because the balls between them roll. Ball bearings are used in cycles, cars, fans and machines. As we have seen, Friction plays an important role in our lives. It helps us to walk, run, hold objects and do many more things in the absence of which life would not have been as we know it today.